One of the things that you'll find if, the, if you look at creative production in any domain, it doesn't matter, artistic domain, food production, um, novels written, novels sold, money generated, number of companies generated, um, number of goals scored in hockey, etc. Any, any, or no, number of paintings painted, number of compositions written, anything like that where, where the fundamental underlying measure is human productivity, what you find is that a very tiny percentage of people produce almost all the output. It's called a Pareto distribution, P-A-R-E-T-O. And it was studied in detail in scientific productivity by someone named De Sola Price. It's a square root law, so here's the law fundamentally. If you look at the number of people who are, doing, who are, who are in a given domain, who are producing in a given domain, the square root of the people produce half the product. So that means if you have 10 employees, three of them do half the work. But if you have 10,000 employees, 100 of them do half the work. Right. It's a very, very vicious statistic. And you won't learn about that in psychology for reasons I have no idea about, because you learn about the normal distribution and not the Pareto distribution. But Pareto distributions govern, for example, the distribution of money, which is why 1% of the people in the general population have the overwhelming amount of money and one-tenth of that one percent has almost all of that right so I think it's like the richest hundred people in the world have as much money as the bottom two and a half billion and you think well that's a terrible thing and perhaps it is but what you have to understand is that that law governs the distribution of creative production across all creative domains right it's something like a natural law and we can, we'll talk about that more, but imagine what happens when you play Monopoly. You've all played Monopoly. What happens when you play Monopoly? One person ends up with all the money. All right, then you play another game of Monopoly. What happens? One person ends up with all the money. It's actually the inevitable consequence of multiple trades that are conducted randomly. So if you take a thousand people and you get them to play a trading game, you, get, you each give them hundred dollars, say, or ten dollars, and they have to trade with another person by flipping a coin, I, I win the coin toss, you give me a dollar, you win, I give you a dollar. If we all play that long enough, one person will end up with all the money and everyone else will end up with zero. So it's a deeply built feature of systems of creative production and no one really knows what to do about it because of course the danger is, is that all the resources get funneled to a tiny minority of people at the top and a huge section of the population stacks up at zero. But to blame that on the oppressive nature of a given system is to radically underestimate the complexity of the problem. No one actually knows how to effectively shovel resources from the minority that, that controls almost everything to the majority that has almost nothing in any consistent way. Because as you shovel money down, it tends to move right back up. And it's a big problem.